Hi <clears throat> guys. Well, it is turning into a stormy night here in the collapse of everything. It is a Monday night. Uh, <coughs> what would that be? March 18th, 2024. And so guys, we have a special edition of the Good News Monday Roundup Rant. And, um, and it is none other than good news from our favorite, well, I think, uh, Doomer, now former Doomer, James Hansen. And uh, we are going to devote the majority of this. But of course, you know, as, as you guys know, I am a Doomer real estate investor in Central Florida. And... Uh, just, just absolutely, everywhere I look, uh, good news. Uh, here are the nation's, the nation's fastest growing areas in Florida. <laughs> Take a wild guess. The nation's fastest growing area would be the villages, the villages and the little town next to it called Wildwood. Uh, <laughs> the villages, the, <coughs> the fastest, second fastest growth rate in the country, Lakeland and Winter Haven, um, coming in at two and three in the Ocala area the fourth fastest growing real estate market uh, and all of these are within oh, you, you know within 30 minutes of the Inverness uh, Brooksville area where I am investing uh, and here you go the population growth in Florida in Florida's metro areas underscores a large trend of widespread population growth across the South, the nation's fastest growing region and the site of all, all of the top 10 fastest growing U.S. metro areas from 22 to 23. There you go, as more and more and more clueless fucking morons pouring into Central Florida. And right along with that from Reuters News, U.S. home builder confidence at highest level since July. Yes, U.S. home builder confidence rose in March to the highest level. <coughs> Excuse me, to the highest level since July due to easing mortgage rates in an improved pricing environment amid a continued existing home inventory shortage, the National Association of Home Builders said on Monday. All right, the, the market index of builder confidence rose to 51 this month from 48 just last month. Quote, buyer demand remains brisk and we expect more consumers to jump off the sidelines and into the marketplace if mortgage rates continue to fall later this year, blah, blah, blah. It is just another day on the planet, clueless fucking morons pouring in to Central Florida. Uh, and I am right in the bullseye. But of course, the number one greatest news is if that wasn't, you know that I am, I've, I've said, many times that I am an investor in clueless fucking morons. I invest in human stupidity. And now 
I want to thank James Hansen, James Hansen, for increasing the human stupidity quotient fivefold. Uh, this article coming in this morning, this long involved article uh, coming in on Salon Magazine, from Salon Magazine, you know, one of these lefty mag magazines that I have nothing but respect for. Salon Magazine, uh, the, the absolute total opposite of Fox News and the, uh, the Telegraph. You know, Salon is kind of more or less usually along the Guardian's uh, level, uh, and so if Salon is saying it, you know, it, it, I, I would think if somebody had told me this article was in Salon and not in the Telegraph or on Fox News, uh, I, I would say obviously you are confused. Uh, but this article, this article uh, I, I, I can already hear the, uh, the home builders and real estate developers in Florida cheering on this article. This article is going to do more damage uh, to, uh, to the, 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 the climate alarmist movement. This, this one article is going to be so outrageously taken out of context. I can already hear Alex Jones waving it around. James Hansen ha ha has had enough of doomers. Okay? James Hansen. Uh, I'm sorry, James Book Hermit Hansen, I guess. I, I did not realize that James Hansen was a big fan of Book Hermit, but, but obviously uh, James Hansen uh, is clearly getting his information from Book Hermit. So Book Hermit, when did you become an advisor to, to, to James Hansen? And uh, so anyway guys, as hard as this is going to be for me, <laughs> <laughs> and, and trust me, this is a challenge. I, I, I am going to sit here and read this article, which apparently from Salon Magazine is being put out to this morning without a trace of irony. I'm going to try to keep my smart-ass Doomer comments to myself. I am thrilled to announce that Elliot Jacobson, my buddy Elliot Jacobson from Climate Casino is also uh, uh, trying to digest uh, the, the, this uh, box car full of hopium and so uh, Elliot Jacobson and I tomorrow night uh, we are going to visit this article and Elliot and I are going, going to be uh, picking this article apart you know and one of our smothers brothers of the doomosphere we'll let Elliot uh, take over the, uh, <laughs> the the serious part and, and, and I will try to hold my uh, my psychic puke sarcasm until tomorrow because you, you really just need to hear this. Uh, the, 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 it is not April. For, we're, we're 12 days out of April from April Fools, but apparently uh, the Michael Mann uh, anti-doomer train ha has caught up with James Hansen and a bunch of these, these, these other guys and uh, Michael Mann and James Hansen are now smoking the hopium pipe together. And this is what Salon Magazine, never mentioning Michael Mann's name in this article. Okay.
Michael Mann's fingerprints are all over this article. So imagine Michael Mann lurking in the background, and, and I can only imagine the shit that James Hansen is deservedly going to eat from the uh, Doomer community. Anyway, I'm going to try to shut up with my smart ass mouth. Okay? And don't worry. My, you will hear plenty of my smart ass interpretation of this article. But without further ado, if I can keep a straight face, we're going to visit the greatest good news I have ever heard and since becoming a doomer that there are no such thing as tipping points. This whole term tipping point is bullshit. Okay, just uh, anybody who thinks that this climate is heading into some sort of irreversible tipping point let Salon Magazine and James Hansen set you at ease so you can think of something else to talk about. Take it away, Salon Magazine. Will Earth hit a climate tipping point? Here is why experts say this framework is problematic. <clears throat> okay, straight face time. You can do it, Sam. <clears throat> People who follow climate change are often told there is a tipping point, a single moment after which it will be too late to reverse the damage caused by our excessive use of fossil fuels. Yet experts say this concept is misleading with one scientist James Hansen, who played a key early role in raising climate change awareness, describing the phrase as greatly overused and misused. Those damn doomers. Powerful institutions seemingly disagree. The World Economic Forum. Okay. There you go. The world econ. <laughs> okay. Cut it. Uh, you, you know, but but uh, <laughs> the world economic forum uh, getting in a debate with <laughs> with <laughs> with James Hansen. Who is the doomer here? The world economic forum uses the phrase tipping point when describing the various environmental consequences that will ensue once Earth warms more than one and a half Celsius above pre-industrial levels. The European Space Agency declares that, quote, climate tipping points are elements of the Earth system in which small changes can kick off reinforcing loops that tip a system from one stable state into a profoundly different state." Close quote. In 2021, the authors of a study published in the journal Nature wrote that, quote, small changes in forcing cause substantial and irreversible alterations to Earth system components called tipping elements. A 2023 survey published in Sage Journals found members of the British public to be widely demoralized about society's ability, or should we say inability, to cope with any impending climate change tipping point. The phrase even appears in the kids' scientific magazine Frontiers for Young Minds, appearing in an article titled Tipping Points, Climate Surprises. Yet, 
yet many scientists, and, and, and I wonder where Michael Mann was in this, uh, yet, yet many scientists do not like the term tipping point. They don't care for it because they feel it oversimplifies the science or, and this is what it's all about, because it cultivates a fatalistic outlook. Hansen is among these scientists. The Columbia University climatologist is renowned for writing about fossil fuel consumption and climate change as far back as the 1980s, when few other public figures had done so. Hansen's 1988 testimony before the Senate is widely considered to be a landmark event. Could it be considered a tipping point? In the history of spreading public knowledge about Earth's rising temperatures, how we frame, how we frame that issue is important to how we effectively spread that message. Okay, take it away, James Hansen. Quote, the tipping point concept is greatly overused and misused. The phrase, you know, tipping point, is mighty popular among scientists and the public, used for many different climate processes. In fact, most of those processes are better described as amplifying reversible feedbacks. Yes, close quote. Although climate change is going to have very significant consequences for humanity, according to Hansen, quote, it is not a runaway process. Okay, climate change is not a runaway process. You know, we can just, uh, just, just, just throw a lasso around it. There's nothing runaway about it. Uh, put an amber alert out for it. I, 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 you said, okay, I will try to behave. Another clueless mourner, Kevin Trenberth, a distinguished scholar at the National Center for Atmospheric Research who has published more than 600 articles on climatology, agrees, explaining to Salon that, quote, there are no real tipping points. There you go. You heard it from Kevin Trenberth, <clears throat> quote, there are no real tipping points. There are times when the rates of change may increase substantially because of feedbacks, but it's not like a pencil balancing on its end that when touched topples over. Close quote. Unfortunately, for fans of scientific accuracy, that is precisely how climate change is depicted in famous sci science fiction representations of climate change, like the 2004 blockbuster, The Day After Tomorrow. Then again, it is difficult to blame popular entertainers for reinforcing that particular misconception. People who learn, you know, the few people who give a damn, those people who learn about how humanity has negatively altered our natural environment can respond with a wide range of negative emotions, including hopelessness. 
including her, bless me, including her, her, including her, including hopelessness. And anxiety! Ah! Ah! And people experiencing those emotions are more likely to believe there is a tipping point after which humanity is utterly fucked. Well, they say doomed. You know, it's, it's, the, it's those people experiencing hopelessness and anxiety are more likely to believe there is a tipping point after which humanity is utterly doomed. Yet, that notion is mistaken. There you go. That notion that humanity is doomed. Bullshit. Fucking bullshit. It says right here in Salon Magazine. Anybody who believes humanity is doomed is full of shit. There you go. You read it in Salon Magazine. You did not read it in The Telegraph. You did not read it on Fox News. Salon Magazine. Right here. That notion, you know, you know uh, that humanity is utterly doomed is mistaken. Walt Meyer, a senior scientist at the University of Colorado Boulder's National Snow and Ice Data Center, similarly told Salon, he does not believe it is scientifically accurate to say, quote, that there is a tipping point toward genuine civilization collapse. Although there are, I mean, close quote, I that. Although, he said, there are individual irreversible thresholds that humans could pass. Okay. There is no tipping point that will result in genuine civilizational collapse. I guess fake civilization. Anyway, Meyer's colleague, Julianne C. Strove, also a senior scientist at the University of Colorado, Boulder, blah, 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 said that she thinks of a tipping point, quote, as a threshold that, when crossed, causes a system to change its behavior, close quote. This is dis distinct from how the term is often used, namely with the idea that it involves uh, on a global scale, on a global scale, quote, irreversibility, which has to do with the impossibility of returning to its previous state. So here we are. Uh, we we get in that even if uh, it something does tip over, it's not irreversible. It's never too late, even when the freight train has smashed into the brick wall or whatever. It's it, it's not too late to simply. You know, pick up the freight train, rebuild it, and turn it around and hit it back the other way. For example, Strove said, quote, The loss of Arctic sea ice in summer would be a tipping point, but it's not irreversible, close quote. Now, losing the winter cover ice, by contrast, would be irreversible, but defining such an event depends on the time scale. Quote, on a geological time scale, ice sheets have come and gone, but on a human time scale, if we lose them, we can 
basically consider them gone forever, close quote. The ter this term forever, y y you know, uh, you, you hear this all the time uh, about the term forever. The term forever means one thing for geologists and glaciologists and climate change deniers studying epochs or epochs, as I was uh, corrected, and quite another to a person who wants to gaze upon ice sheets with their own eyes. Hansen, okay, now we're going to talk about that carbon bomb, that, that other guy who claims uh, we're all going to be extinct in 2026, always uh, harping on about Hansen pointed to melting permafrost as an example for why the framing implied in the phrase tipping point is misleading. Quoting James Hansen on the carbon bomb, quote, There is a tremendous store of carbon in permafrost, which, if all released to the atmosphere would have a devastating climate impact." Close quote. Hansen explained how the carbon dioxide that is released by melting permafrost amplifies the global warming caused by human-made greenhouse gases, but that won't happen all at once. But it is rather slow. It is rather slow and can be cut off. It can be cut off. If we begin to cool the planet, that's no small task, of course. Close quote. Yes, the carbon bomb is rather slow and can be cut off. Once the permafrost goes, it is not an irreversible process. All we have to do is cool the planet. Just cool the planet. You want to stop a carbon bomb from blowing up? Cool the planet. All right. When these scientists question the usefulness of tipping point terminology, they are not, despite what uh, you're going to be hearing all over YouTube from the uh, Alex Jones crowd, they are not discounting the genuine threat posed to humanity by global heating. They all do agree that climate change is changing the planet in ways that will harm, otherwise kill, hundreds of millions of people. Yet, you know, despite that little uh, you know, inconvenient truth, uh, yet how we frame these issues is critical to how we start to address them. And experts argue that the idea of a single occasion in which humans cross a barrier from climate change can be fixed to climate change is unfixable is inaccurate. The Earth's climate is far more complicated than such framing suggests. Instead of seeking one single moment when a figurative switch is flipped, people should look for a constellation of warning signs. There are already many signs that the planet's rising temperature is leading to ecological devastation. Thank you very much. I call this the toxic stew, is my words for it. 
uh, the toxic stew of overshoot, you know, trying to parse out one event, whatever. Uh, you, you know, I agree with, uh, with this shit. If you really want to get, you know, split hairs that uh, on, uh, you know, on whatever date uh, today we're not fucked. And uh, we've been fucked for so long anyway. I said I was going to keep this for tomorrow. Okay, back to trend birth. The way we're, we are going, we are already on a dangerous course. Only in retrospect will we likely say, oh, this was a sort of tipping point, close quote. He listed off variables that could be viewed by future historians as tipping points. We could have all kinds of fun with that one. I, I, I'm sure Elliot and I could spend an hour uh, <laughs> listing off variables that can be viewed by future historians as tipping points, but which may not be recognized as such by contemporaries living through them. People who live near coasts may, in retrospect, view rapid sea level rise as a tipping point since they will endure massive floods and coastal erosion. Those who inhabit flat areas like plains will also experience worsened flooding due to climate change, and people in regions all over the planet will be susceptible to the droughts caused by heat waves, said Trenberth. There is a big chance natural variability component to when and where these threats are realized. Strove said that potential red flags for Earth entering a severe state of crisis. This is a, 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 a another list that we could have all kinds of fun. Okay, what are some potential red flags that our planet is entering a state of crisis. Well, she says, how about irreversible, irreversible loss of ice for the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets, which could happen between 1.3 degrees C and 1.6 C, respectively, Although Strove added, quote, there are lots of uncertainties here. Similarly, Strove speculated that there could be, okay, now this one, this one, even Strove, even Ms. Strove, it could be a tipping point-like event. Not a tipping point, a tipping point like event in the Amazon rainforest if its area shrinks so much that it cannot generate enough water vapor to support itself. She said she is not, quote, sure if that, meaning the collapse of the Amazon rainforest, would be irreversible, though, just because the, the biggest rainforest on the planet does collapse, y y you know, we can just replant it. Donald Trump, trillion tree Trump, there is nothing irreversible about the collapse of the, the tipping point-like event known as the collapse of the Amazon rainforest these goddamn doomers acting like that would be irreversible. You know, I don't blame this woman 
for, uh, I mean, even Sancho Panza, sick and tired uh, of hearing any alarmist doomer claiming that the collapse of the Amazon rainforest uh, is irreversible. That, 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 that's why God invented shovels to replant the trees. Damn doomer. Meyer confirmed Strove's observation about the potentially catastrophic consequences of rapid loss to ice sheets. Quote, the ice sheets, and I have confirmed this with Book Hermit, will not suddenly lose all of their ice it is something that will happen over hundreds and even thousands of years. As climate changes, there will definitely be costs in money, such as infrastructure, and human lives as we try to mitigate and adapt to climate change. We will have to live with, and already are living with, sea level rise, more extreme weather, more wildfires, ecosystem changes, etc. But none of this is implying a tipping point. That said, that said, it will not lead. You're hearing it in Salon Magazine. It will not lead to global civilization collapse all at once. No, it's going to start in sub-Saharan Africa, like I've been saying for 10 years. I I anyway, uh, Hansen likewise mentioned the possible collapse of the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets as events that would signal, if not a tipping point, at the very least, some level of long-term damage to the planet. He also speculated that this could happen if a system of ocean currents known as AMOC completely collapses. Okay, so James Hansen says that is getting damn close to a tipping point, the collapse of the AMOC. Quote, it would take centuries for AMOC to recover. This will not cause civilization to collapse per se, but it could happen as early as mid-century and in doing so speed the collapse of the West Antarctic ice sheet this is because shutting down AMOC reduces the transport of Southern Hemisphere heat to the tropics and to the Northern Hemisphere. It is rapid sea level rise and the accompanying shift of climate zones that create a potential existential threat to humanity as they would drive immigration pressures that could make the planet ungovernable, close quote, but still not a tipping point. We have an ungovernable planet, but you, you know, look at Haiti. Look at Haiti, and, and uh, Haiti's still there. If you want to see uh, the planet, uh, in a few years, look at Haiti, and uh, uh, Haiti clearly has not crossed a tipping point. Just, uh, just uh, imagine uh, living in Haiti uh, for the rest of your fucking life. Okay, Hansen added that mass extinctions are certainly irreversible, although even they Mass extinctions may not count as tipping points exactly. You know, I would really like to uh, interview a passenger pigeon 
to uh, get the, or a woolly mammoth. I, I would really like to hear what a passenger pigeon would have to say to anyone claiming that extinction is not exactly a tipping point. Okay, one day a species exists on the planet, the next day a species does not exist on the planet. There is a day when the last of a species goes off planet, yet that is irreversible, but not exactly a tipping point, according to James Hansen. Quote, extermination, you know, by humans of species is practically irreversible, and some ecosystems can collapse if key species go extinct, and we are in the midst of a mass extinction event, close quote, but a mass extinction event, the sixth mass extinction, according to James Hansen, does not fit the definition of a tipping point. As Hansen summed it up, the underlying problem in communicating climate change is events that may seem to unfold slowly to other people are actually happening rapidly in terms of the larger history of Earth. Quote, the delayed response of the climate system to human-made climate forcing is what makes these issues so difficult to communicate with the public. The time scales are very slow as seen by the public, even though human-forced climate change is occurring very rapidly compared with geological timescales. Yes. This, close quote, this is why it is misleading. It is misleading, you know, for these goddamn doomers to frame the climate change crisis, crisis in terms of a climax or tipping point. It establishes false expectations about how exactly global warming is harming everyone's lives. It is instead more useful to view climate change as a multifaceted dilemma that will require an equally multifaceted response. As Meyer noted, this still emphasizes that the issue is very difficult to beat, but also established that it is not. It is not an impossible dilemma. Quote, I worry about talking about climate change leading to civilization collapse or even human extinction will actually lead to fatalism. Fatalism and the thought that there is nothing society can do. So, let's not worry about it. Climate change is a big challenge, but a solvable one. And there you go. And uh, just to wrap up uh, the good news uh, roundup, assuming my camera is still running, uh, j just in case you don't have enough toilet paper in your house to uh, wipe away all of the shit you just heard there are 23 alternatives to toilet paper. After civilization collapses with or without help from climate change and you run out of toilet paper, there are 23 other ways to wipe your ass, one of them being your left hand. Anyway. We got to wrap the, up this tipping point, and I got to go tip a bottle of uh, tequila into this 
uh, cup and refresh my drink. We will be back tomorrow night with Elliot Jacobson to uh, dig a little deeper in the well. Bye, guys. We made it through with the battery warning flashing, little dog. Bye, guys.